Hi everyone, my name is Jonas and in this video we are going into the dark. We are going on a journey into a cave, the Rising Star Cave in South Africa. The remains of a mysterious creature were found. These creatures, a human relative called Humanaledi, were unlike anything we've ever seen before. Let's explore the Rising Star Cave and uncover one of the most fascinating and mysterious discoveries in human history. The Rising Star Cave is a spectacular and complex labyrinth of chambers and passages. And this is the place where a team of brave cavers and scientists made a stunning discovery in 2013. Hundreds of fossil bones of a new species of human ancestors, Homo naledi, alive for over 300,000 years ago. The biggest mystery of all is probably how and why did they end up deep inside a pitch black cave system that is almost inaccessible even to modern humans. South Africa 2013. A group of adventurous cavers decided to explore the Rising Star cave system. They had heard rumors of a hidden chamber that contained ancient human fossils, but no one had ever been able to find it. They entered the cave with flashlights and ropes, following a map drawn by a previous explorer. They crawled through narrow openings, they climbed over sharp rocks and descended into deep pits. They reached a point deep inside the cave where the map indicated a vertical chute that went further down into the dark, leading to a mysterious chamber. One by one, they squeezed through the tight space. They emerged into a large cavern with sandy floor filled with bones. They were stunned by the sight. There were skulls, ribs, limbs and teeth scattered all over the floor. The remains were later confirmed to be 15 individuals in total. They looked like human bones, but they were different. They were smaller, more primitive and more ancient. They realized they had stumbled upon a new species of hominin, an extinct relative of modern humans. It is a baffling mystery how so many individuals from one species ended up in such an inaccessible cavern. The only entrance, after having crawled and squeezed through the first part of the cave, is a 39 foot, that's 12 meters, vertical crack called the chute, a perilous drop into the dark. No other ways in or out have ever been detected by geologists and cavers. Without flashlights, ropes and other modern gear, this place really is locked away from the rest of the world. But how could these, compared to us, primitive creatures have ended up here over 300,000 years ago? Another, even more baffling discovery was made in the dark. On a limestone ledge about 2.6 feet, that's 80 centimeters, above the ground in the chamber, lay the shattered pieces of a small skull. It turned out to be the shattered skull of a human Aleri child, nicknamed Leti, meaning the lost one in Setswana, the language of South Africa. Based on the dating of uh, other bones in the cave, Leti may have lived hundreds of thousands of years ago. It's uh, a hunting clue to an ancient puzzle. How did Leti's skull end up in such an isolated place? Did she go there herself? Was she alive or did she die in the cave? Was her body taken deep into the cave after her death by her relatives as part of an ancient burial ritual? Now, you will think, wow, this sounds cool. I have to go there and see, do some caving myself. Wait a minute. You will probably just get stuck or scared of the dark. And if you happen to get into the cave, you won't get out. And when they go in, there's no coming out. She's always hungry. You will probably end up 
being the 16th skeleton in there. The Naledi chamber, that's where the bones were found. It's not easable, uh, easily accessible. Uh, in fact, you have to be uh, a combination of Indiana Jones and the Superman to reach, uh, reach the cave. In addition, you cannot be much bigger than the size of a soda can to reach the innermost chamber. Since the last vertical 12 meters deep chute narrows to 7 inches or 18 centimeters in places. So you have to do a lot of intermittent fasting to get through. To reach the last chamber where the remains were found, one has to pass through several difficult obstacles and passages along the way. The first one is called the Superman's Crawl. Now, I don't know if that's a cool name or a silly name. Maybe it should have been called uh, the Spider-Man's Crawl. Anyway, this crawl is a tight horizontal squeeze that requires holding one arm tightly against the body and extending the other one above the head, like Superman in flight. This Superman's Crawl opens up into the dragon's back chamber, which includes an approximately 15 meters exposed climb up a ridge of a sharp edge dolomite. After reaching the top of the dragon, the dragon's back, one has to descend into a narrow slot that leads to another horizontal squeeze called the post box. Saving the earth from the scum of the universe. This squeeze is only 25 centimeters high and 45 centimeters wide, and it requires sliding feet first into a dark hole with no visibility. So, as a training session before you go there, try squeezing yourself into your post box. The post box then opens into a small chamber with a sandy floor, where you have to crawl on your knees to reach a vertical drop called the slot. The slot is about six meters deep, very narrow, and it requires sliding down head first twisting and turning to fit through the tight space. The slot ends at the entrance of the Dinaledi chamber. And all this was done in complete darkness by the Humu Naledi people at least 300,000 years ago. Traces of charcoal has been found in the Rising Star cave system. So, uh, in whatever way they got into the innermost chamber, they must have used torches or uh, some other form of light sources to, to get in there. So, how did the Homo Naledi individuals end up in the cave and in this chamber? One possible explanation is that they deliberately deposited of the dead in the cave as a form of ritual behavior. This would imply a high level of cognitive and social complexity for such a small brain hominin. The researchers who proposed this idea argued that uh, the fossils showed no signs of predation, scavenging or natural uh, disasters that could have uh, transported them to the chamber. They also noted that the chamber had no other animal remains, except for a few rodents and birds that likely fell through the vertical shaft. Another possible explanation is that Humanaledi used the cave as a refuge or a shelter, and uh, some of them died there by accident or by disease. And this would imply that they had some kind of degree of fire making and light producing skills which uh, the trace of burnt charcoal indicates, as uh, the chamber is pitch black and uh, far from any natural light sources. The researchers who suggested this scenario pointed out that uh, the fossils showed signs of dental disease, malnutrition and trauma that uh, could have affected their survival. They also noted that some of the bones had marks that could indicate tool use or processing by other Homo naledi individuals. So, what do you think? 
The debate over these theories is still ongoing and uh, no one knows for sure what happened. This is all for this episode. I hope you uh, enjoyed the video and if you did, please give the video a thumbs up and uh, give your own thoughts and uh, most importantly, stay away from that cave. Okay, I'll see you next time. Bye.